Samsung's own take on the curved phone goes from side to side, and they are hoping that this new form factor will provide a couple new functions. Well, let's see what the curve does for this new horizon for the Galaxy line. Hey, it's Josh Vergar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Samsung Galaxy Round. <laughs> A 5.7-inch screen makes for a phone that is pretty similar to the Galaxy Note 3, especially in size. Pretty much this is the classic Samsung layout, with the button layout including the home button up front flanked by back and menu. The back of the phone employs a textured plastic that mimics leather, and is a wonderful step away from the old glossy plastic of all the devices, pretty much, that came before the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. The textured plastic that made it onto the Galaxy Note 3 makes it onto this Galaxy Round, and it's just a really nice feeling material that makes the phone feel very comfortable in the hand, especially with that curve. As such, the sides do seem quite thin, but once you have the phone in your hand, you'll feel that the center of the phone is a little bit heavier than the rest. And these curves do allow for some leaning when you have the phone sitting on a table, which does make for some new functionality. Ultimately though, the main function that you'll find when it comes to the curve is that it sits very nicely in your hand. After all, when you have the phone in your hand, it definitely just contours to the curve that your fingers would make, or your palm and your fingers would make when holding this phone. But it also raises the sides somewhat, making full screen reach actually better. It's a bit surprising to actually be able to clear the entire screen via that one-handed grip. Essentially what you're looking at here is a slightly more compact version of the Galaxy Note 3. It's almost as if somebody left the Galaxy Note 3 out in the hot sun, and this was the end result. The phone just kind of curled up a bit due to the sun damage. No, this won't actually happen to your phone if you leave it out in the sun. Samsung brought in its Super AMOLED technology, this time sized at 5.7 inches with a bit of a curve on the sides as we've been saying. However, it also brings Samsung's good quality experience. This screen is capable at 1080p resolution at 386 ppi. And when it comes to the colors, they are expectedly oversaturated. But when you go into the options, you are able to customize the look of these colors if you want to tone them down a little bit. There's no doubt that in the Galaxy Round, Samsung proves how good they are with displays once again. The sharpness is still great for all text, and all media shines through because of that good color reproduction. Also, with a Super AMOLED display, you have a little bit better contrast, so really, any media and even your games are going to look quite good on this screen. Unlike the LG counterpart, the LG G Flex, the curve doesn't necessarily skew any images or really anything that you see on the screen. You pretty much don't recognize the curve happening when you're watching, say, videos on YouTube. However, Samsung did try to make the motif kind of play out a little bit in the UI, seeing as the screens sort of push back a little bit and then move over, sort of giving that illusion that the curve is actually making a difference. The only kind of weird development you'll see when it comes to the screen is through the reflections. When the screen is off and you have the phone sitting on a table, you might glance over at it and it gives you a warped image of anything that it's reflecting. It's almost as if you're experiencing vertigo, but literally only when you're looking at the Galaxy Round. The increasingly common Snapdragon 800 clocked in at 2.3 GHz brings its expected power this time to the Galaxy Round, and it is backed by the Adreno 330 and 3 GB of RAM, a development that did make its debut originally on the Galaxy Note 3. TouchWiz then moves along about as fast as it ever has. 3 GB of RAM allows the Galaxy Round to perform a lot of multitasking pretty seamlessly, including the usual multi-window, which is one of those features that works really well on a screen as big as this. When we make it to the hardware section, we find that much of what makes Samsung devices pretty attractive in the first place continues in this new iteration. For example, 32GB of onboard storage is expandable via the microSD card slot easily found underneath that back cover. And then we find a very full-featured set that has become a general trope of flagship Samsung devices that include an IR blaster for watch-on capabilities for controlling your TVs and set-top boxes, and even the sensors that are used by S-Health to check your general surroundings. Now, if we're really talking about features that are either in or not in the Galaxy Round, obviously we've been making comparisons due to the size of this phone to the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. So if we're gonna continue on that path, we will say that pretty much the only thing this phone is missing in terms of the Samsung lexicon is the S Pen. So you have pretty much every other feature, the sensors for air gestures and air views. But if you don't use the stylus at all, this might be an alternative to the Galaxy Note 3 for you. 
Call quality was pretty unsurprisingly good, with no real complaints going in either direction for my voice or the voices on the other line. When it comes to the main speaker, it does get quite loud, and the sound is actually not too bad, but the higher the volume is, the less fidelity you'll get in the sound. When it comes to battery life, you do get this somewhat newly shaped battery inside of the Galaxy Round. It has been elongated in order to accommodate the new shape of the phone, and it also comes in at a bit of a lower capacity. For a phone about this size, we do have a battery here that comes in at below 3000 milliamp hours. Indeed, this one comes in at 2800, which actually in the long run of things doesn't really change the battery life too much on this particular phone. For the average user, I see no reason why they couldn't get close to two days out of the Galaxy Round with some pretty frugal usage. There was even a spare battery and a separate charger that was included with the unit that I have right now, but I do understand that this is not something that usually happens for every single device. And then we make it on over to the camera. This 13 megapixel shooter does bring the quality that you could pretty much come to expect from Samsung devices. If you have used a camera in the past on a flagship Samsung device, you pretty much know what to expect here. You also do expect that in the app you get a lot of different ways of getting different kinds of photos, so there's a lot of ways for you to get creative when it comes to your smartphone photography. The app is also quite fast, at least it's about as fast as we need it to be, allowing for some quick shooting. The shutter to file speeds are pretty good, allowing you to get off a few really quick shots in good succession. And of course, the picture quality is pretty expectedly good, much like the Galaxy Note 3 and the Galaxy S4 before it. Colors have a pretty good color reproduction, and details are pretty crisp, especially from this 13 megapixel shooter. Ultimately, if you happen to have used a camera from before, like I said, then you pretty much know to, what to expect here. Especially if you liked the most recent offerings of cameras on Samsung flagship devices, then you're gonna like the one that's found on the Galaxy Round. Touch whiz, touch whiz, touch whiz. Of course, when Samsung puts out a lot of different devices, we get to know the operating system quite well on every single one of them. And if you have grown quite tired of Samsung's user interface, it does continue to appear on their phones, bringing more and more features every single time. So what does that mean for the Galaxy Round? Well, before we get into those, we will say that many of the new features originally introduced in the Galaxy S4 make it onto this new Galaxy iteration. Air gestures, air view, and even the smart pause and scroll make it into the bevy of functionality that's available in this phone. So when it comes to this side-to-side -side curve on the Galaxy Round, what new features did Samsung conjure up from it? Well, I did cover those features in a previous feature focus video focusing on the tilt functions. Now, when it comes to these particular functions, I think that the most useful ones are probably the quick glance where you tilt the phone a certain way in order to see a quick glance at your notifications, though there is a bit of a pause from when you actually tilt the phone to when you see the actual notifications. I think if you have the air gesture where you just wave your hand over the sensor, it might be even a little bit faster than the quick glance tilt. And then after that, you can change the track on the music player by tilting it to the left or right. However, much like many other features found on Samsung devices, this only really works on the Samsung-specific music player. But as is the question with pretty much every Samsung device these days, it is whether or not those functions are practical for you that might be the selling point. Release details on this particular device are still pretty fuzzy, but since this is Samsung's newest flagship device, we can pretty much expect it to come out on all of the major carriers. And when it does, it'll likely come in at those typical high-end price points, along with perhaps the two-year contracts. And so, there you have it. For this brand new flagship in Samsung's camp, the Galaxy Round manages to make a big, note-sized device slightly easier to use, and in reality that is somewhat valuable. Where one might find some questions when it comes to value is obviously in the feature set. The curves don't really translate to very groundbreaking new functions, making this essentially a compacted Note 3 without an S Pen. For the most part, that is the way you can look at the Galaxy Round. Don't get me wrong, this is still a phone that is very enjoyable to use. It brings all of the good Samsung quality that we've come to expect, along with a couple new features based on that curve. And when it comes to that curve, it does allow this phone to be a little bit easier to handle than you would have expected. And that is actually pretty refreshing. However, ultimately at the end of the day, it just feels like, it feels too much like a Galaxy Note 3 without ever using the S Pen. And given that there are so many users out there who do exactly that, Perhaps the Galaxy Round has carved out, very narrowly, a new niche. And if that's something that actually appeals to you, 
well, then this is a device you can definitely look at. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review of the Samsung Galaxy Round. Drop us likes on our videos, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also follow us all on social media. If you want to follow me, of course, I'm Joshua Vergara on Google+, and on Twitter and Instagram, I am Josh. Salutes. Keep it tuned to Android Authority, because we are your source for all things Android.